Sky FM, 101.9 megahertz of life. We wanted to change discussions completely and we wanted to talk about uh, the issue around uh, around the impact of the vaccine on fertility and women's menstrual cycle. We've spoken to do- Dr. Lawrence Gobitz before. He's a reproductive medicine specialist with Vitalab. And, uh, but every now and then, this conversation seems to come up. And it, in fact, has uh, done so uh, with around the discussion about making vaccines mandatory in South Africa. And part of the complaint or part of the concern is the impact on younger women who won't have a choice about receiving the vaccination. What is the latest finding in terms of uh, the uh, impact on fertility and women's menstrual cycle length. Dr. Lawrence Gobitz, good morning. Thanks for speaking to us again. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks, Howard. How are you? Yeah, I am well, thank you. When last we spoke, uh, we we did deal with this issue, but every now and then it seems to come back again. It does, because I think, you know, people are looking to want to publish issues. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's in this world we live in currently, it's publish or perish. So if you can try and find other aspects to write a paper about, so suddenly now what's hit the news is uh, what's happening with female menstrual cycles, you know. And uh, right. looking at menstrual cycles both from the viral point of view, just the actual raw illness, and looking at it from the vaccination point of view. Okay, so can we break it down? Does first of all, does COVID affect uh, women's menstrual cycles and and fertility? So I think one thing that we've really come to terms with is that either getting the raw illness or actually getting the vaccination does not affect your fertility. And just interestingly, you know, we, we locked down for three weeks completely. We couldn't treat patients. And then after that, we carried on treating patients. And in fact, we saw no difference in our pregnancy rates. So I think that is that has been laid to rest now. There is no issues related to your fertility. And people who have a fertility problem because they got the vaccination, their fertility problem is unrelated to the vaccination. As far as menstrual cycles go, any woman that gets a viral illness or gets a bacterial illness and has a fever where the body is disturbed, you do sometimes get changes in hormones and changes in the lining of the womb. So they can have an abnormal cycle, but usually the following cycle is back to normal. So a lot of women will tell you that when they're really sick with the flu, it suddenly throws their period out. So that is quite normal. So it's not specific to COVID per se. And then in terms of the vaccine? The the vaccine, if we look at currently, you look at the data, you know, the studies are very small. I mean, we're talking about studies of 177 people, uh, 254 people. And in Europe, they've actually put a lot of money now towards doing research on the COVID vaccine and menstrual irregularities, which uh, I think they should rather spend their money on something more important because, I mean, what we are seeing and a lot of what we are seeing is anecdotal where the patient may experience a temporary change in their menstrual volume or they may have a temporary change in menstrual cycle length, either shorter or longer. It seems to be more it seems to be shorter. So the most commonly observed changes are lighter than normal. And so in other words there's a shorter period of bleeding and there seems to be an mm. increased length in the cycle. Just that specific cycle and thereafter within the cycle the patients are back to normal again. So they want to do some research on seeing is there really an association between this vaccine and perhaps some kind of menstrual irregularity. Now, interestingly, you know, we know that this uh, virus needs the ACE receptor. Um, That's Mm. the acetylcholinesterase receptor. And they've done research on the uterus and there's a very low concentration of that receptor in the uterus. So the virus would not have a predilection for going to the uterus. But uh, the question is, does this change in your immune system in any way affect something within the lining of the uterus? Does it somehow change your hormones? But what one can be reassured with, Howard, is that it's completely temporary. A, B, it does not affect your fertility potential. And C, it should not be a reason or why you shouldn't get the vaccine. Mm, mm. It, it, you know, it may impact those patients who are trying to use their cycle 
uh, you know, they have apps and they're trying to use their cycle for contraceptive purposes or they're trying to use their cycle for fertility purposes. And in that case, just for that month, they may be out. But thereafter, nothing mm. changes. Right. Well, in fact, in a conversation I had with somebody, I asked, uh, they said uh, some time back that they were scared to have the vaccine because it might affect her fertility. And I said, well, I can tell you that uh, the biggest impact to fertility is your own death. That's for sure, because you ain't having a child if you uh, if you die from COVID. Uh, look, yeah. I, you know, I'm not medical, so I can get away with saying things like that. But but uh, it's, it's, it's just a, an absurdity because certainly, you know, if we look at it through maybe through Omicron eyes, it's a bit different. But when we had Delta and the death rate was absolutely staggering, the the discussion actually was it was a little bit absurd, wasn't it? No, absolutely. And I must say, I, I would prefer no death and one month of slight irregularity of my period if I was a female. I really would. I, I hold right. by what you right. said. Yeah, definitely. And uh, in terms of, you know, and, and I don't know what you observed, but there, there was, was also anecdotal information coming out. I remember in Israel at the time when Delta was hitting them quite hard was that pregnant women were being quite severely impacted by Delta. No, in fact, the opposite. And if you looked at the, the waves of Delta and the original variant, um, when you went to ICU, 25% of the patients in ICU were unvaccinated, pregnant, a pregnant women that were in their late second, early third trimester. So, so pregnancy, wow. pregnancy is a comorbidity for COVID, especially the, the late second, early third trimester. And that's why pregnant women must be vaccinated. So, you know, firstly, the, we have enough evidence to show that the vaccine does nothing to the baby and we initially started out by saying you know what the patient should only wait and be vaccinated in the second trimester and at the moment we have evidence to show that even if you get vaccinated in the first trimester it does not affect the fetus so just to remember that 25 percent of patients in the the peaks of uh, mm. of delta were, were pregnant women lying in ICU, unvaccinated. And the other thing is there's a very high incidence of uh, stillborn with, with those women that contracted COVID and ended up in ICU. And in fact, there was one study I read that even quoted a risk of 400 times increased risk of sudden intrauterine fetal death than what we had in the population prior to COVID. So, you know, that's really, really be significant. Yeah, so, just, just, so just for the people at the back, uh, if, if they haven't heard, in your view, as a specialist and who's somebody who deals with fertility or infertility every single day of your life, is there a risk in your view to fertility with regard to the vaccine? No, no, no. All right. So it's uh, it's pretty clear, and uh, yeah. I think it's an important conversation. Even if we do have need to have it a few more times, it is absolutely vital that we are very clear on the facts. Dr. Lawrence Govitz, reproductive medicine specialist with Vitalab, discussing what the to what extent the vaccine could have an impact on fertility and women's menstrual cycle length.